Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. Surprise, surprise, we've been on MotoGP a lot recently. Who the hell would have thought we'd be on MotoGP again? <laughs> Anyway, today we are going to be playing MotoGP 23 and we're going to be using Brad Binder on board the factory Red Bull KTM right here in the magnificent Czech circuit of Bruno. Now let me tell you guys, this is one of the circuits that I long to come back to the MotoGP calendar. It got stricken off in after 2020 because it needed resurfacing and it wasn't up to the safety measures of MotoGP and we are yet to see a return of this fantastic circuit. We have another amazing Czech circuit like Mostyn World Superbike, but we really do need MotoGP to come back to Bruno. I think the majority of the fan base, I know my aces included, really adore this circuit from playing it in the computer games and even watching it as a fan perspective. And of course, 2020 was the final time it aired and showed in MotoGP. And there was only one man who won that day in MotoGP, and that is this man right here, Brad Binder. His first ever MotoGP victory, and the first one to come from a non-European rider for a long, long time, was the South African of Brad Binder. So it just made sense today to use Brad Binder rather than using my own riders. I almost very nearly invalidated the lap on the very first exchange of the circuit. That would have been diabolical, but uh, thankfully... We're still on board, we're still on the track, and we are yet to invalidate. So, let's uh, just talk about a few things today of our historical series. I have been wanting to cover all of the historical circuits within MotoGP 23, which we're actually getting close to doing, actually. We've only got one more to go after this one, which will be Indianapolis. Let me know in the comments section down below what bike you want me to use for Indianapolis when that one does eventually drop. But today... The plan of attack is, I want to do 10 laps, no more, no less. I want to make this a bit of a challenge for myself to get as the best lap time I can. I noticed in the top 10 leaderboard positions, you do need to get into the uh, 150s. And I've just realised I forgot to turn off the ghost. Oh, I hate, I hate the ghost. Apologies. I'm going to do something which I never do usually when I play this game. I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to remove the ghost and we'll get back to it. I know, immersion breaking, I am terrible. Usually I always make sure I restart the video and just remove the ghost so it doesn't affect the gameplay and the video. But uh, yeah, today I, I actually forgot. So I just wanted to turn it off after doing it and then just crack on with the rest of the video. So it's been a while since I've done Bruno. Last time I did it was a uh, online a couple of weeks ago with the Aces. And I think I had... Uh, a good race relatively with a Sacred Meerkat, Charlie, Gilzo, I believe he was there as well. I think even Max B was there as well. However, the point I wanted to make earlier was uh, the aforementioned Sacred Meerkat, one of the fastest aces, if not the fastest ace, did set a lap time of a 1.57 something. So today, within my 10 laps, I want to get as close as possible to the top 10 or preferably in it. So we'll see how that unfolds here today but for the second lap I'm still getting the feel for it but I also want to add another stipulation and challenge to this video today and that being we are going to use the recommended tyre combination today hard front medium rear however after three laps we must change to a different combination therefore we'll be going a little bit softer we'll go for the medium and medium combination don't think we're going to change the rear tyre too much because medium or hard, it doesn't really make much of a difference to me, to me at least. But for the front end feel, for the stability and the braking, it's important to get the front tyre right. So out of the final corner, we're going to cross the line now and it's not an improvement. It is actually a 52.168. So not great pace to start off with, but I'm sure towards the latter stage of the video, I'm sure things will progress and go better. Also a quick note as well, a little bit of a challenge for myself too, is if we do crash on that tyre, we must change it. So even if I crash on my beloved hard front, which feels good here in... Ah, I say that, I've gone wide for turn three now. But I do really like the hard front, it feels fantastic here in Bruneau, and I think it's the tyre you need. But if I crash on this one and I don't get the, uh, the, the lap time, then I've got to move over to the medium front. So we've got to make sure we don't crash on the hard front, otherwise we'll be straight over to a different front tyre. The one thing I am concerned with is the longevity and the temperature of the soft. I don't think the soft is going to last in today's video. If it does, I'll be very surprised, but uh, we'll see and we'll get to it 
when we get to it. That's also deep into turn eight. That's a few mistakes cropping up already in the early stages of today's video. But of course, guys, if you are enjoying this series and if you're enjoying the video and if you're enjoying my content in general, don't forget to subscribe. It does help out the channel and I do really appreciate any support and assistance that you guys can offer. I also had a another idea for today's video. Sometimes I like to try and replicate what the rider does and Bruno is a wonderful circuit for that. Brad Binder obviously has a very unique, aggressive style in MotoGP. Always had it in Moto2 and Moto3 as well, but getting the rear tyre out, always almost invalidate the lap there, it was very close, but getting the rear tyre out, letting it slip and slide is what I'm going to try and do in a couple of corners and you can actually really do it here in Bruno. I'm going to show you in the next stages, but we will get into the final part now to finish our first run with the preferred tyre combo. So across the line, it is an improvement, but let's see what the next tyres are like. Relatively good stuff so far, we are improving, that's all that really matters. It's not great lap times, but I think they're relatively decent for this stage, but I am curious now to see how the medium combination works. The, the medium duo of the medium front and the medium rear. So far so good, we're up by a tenth of a second before we get to the bwin.com sign underneath the bridge and then onto the brakes. Oh, see, look at that, trying to get my binder style out, didn't quite go as planned there, but we are going for a tighter apex which is resulting in a better sector time. Now coming out to turn four and then onto the downhill section for the bottom part of the circuit, you can usually get that rear tire going out and I like that. <laughs> Not quite as much as I would have wanted, but getting the rear tire caught on the curb there really helped to lose the time it's it's not my preferred way to to ride that it doesn't he doesn't feel comfortable and it doesn't feel smooth but it clearly is effective i don't know if i could do that for 10 plus laps but i, I could do it maybe one off every now and again and uh, i think that is going to result in a very very solid improvement here on the fourth lap so so far medium front to medium rear seems to be very good now at the same time it's too early to really predict because i will have to go back to the hard front to really understand the difference but so far it feels really good and I'm very content with the medium front so I really hope that we don't crash on the medium front but if there's anywhere to crash it's certainly here in turn 11 crashed here many times in career modes in the past and of course even crashed against uh, Sacred Meerkat in an online race uh, a long time ago I think Valentino Rossi crashed there at some point as well and really damaged his finger I remember that in particular for that very same left-hander but out of horizon for 13 and onto the right hand side, we will be improving. This could be a lap time to put us already into the 150s. Across the line, not quite, it's a 151, 101. So that is actually a really good lap time. And considering that was our first with the medium front, that's solid, that's really good. I'm very happy with the way this medium front feels, but the, uh, the side of the tyres are going to be a little bit concerning for this time trial. But onto the brakes we go. And then into the... Oh, I wanted to go tight. Didn't quite get the angle there. And we will lose time going into the first split. Which is right here. Just before the corner. And we're losing two and a half tenths. Not ideal to say the least. But I'm still confident we can get the job done. So again, trying to get that rear tyre caught onto the kerb. Run it deeper and wider to this kerb here. To then chuck it in very tight. You can basically run across those two kerbs there. Not a problem at all. The, out of all the curbs in the game, Bruno offers a, a good feeling and sensation of the rumble strips. Uh, there's a lot of tracks in this game where they obviously just, well, they kill your bike. They, they just lose all speed and any momentum you had coming out of that corner and then onto the curb. But here in Bruno, I would say they are pretty good. But one thing that's not good is uh, my front tyre. That is warming up quick. It's heating up quicker than a Bunsen burner. Look at it. Medium front on that right side is... Yeah, it's burning. It is really burning. <laughs> we have to be careful of this one now. But onto the right hand side. Don't go too tight to the apex. Oh, I thought that was going to be it for sure. Getting too tight there. Getting over across that orange bump. That sort of sausage curb is, is, is recipe for disaster, to say the least. And I think I've gone deep here. I have gone deep. Oh, almost like... Oh, <laughs> almost invalidated that one. Very, very nearly almost invalidated that one. Oh, all that effort and we've gone straight back to the 151 highs. Not good. Not, not very consistent so far, to be quite honest with you. Something to mention as well. I don't know how relevant it is. I guess if you want to try and replicate what I'm doing here today, I guess then this is going to be 
relevant information for you. But as usual, it's a basic setup. There's no changes to the suspension or anything like that, or gear ratios. It's just come straight up complete Dr. Ace default. Same thing you've got whenever you turn your console on, exactly the same as that. Also, rider balance performance, that's the one. Balance performance is disabled. I don't know if that would be better for the Red Bull KTM because I think its performance is a 93%. But yeah, it's disabled. I don't know how much time extra would find with enabled, but it's not really relevant for me today. I wasn't actually trying to do any world records here today. Just aiming for that top 10, which I hope we get. I'm, I'm fingers and toes crossed here today. And that's probably why I've got cramp. I've been struggling with cramp for like the past hour. Just in my left foot, like pins and needles and cramp. That's probably why I'm too busy, uh, <laughs> too busy uh, t t crossing toes and whatnot. It's not ideal for the 29-year-old man from Warrington. So on the right-hand side into the Schwantz corner, we're down by a tenth of a second, and that front is looking worse for wear. But it should be good for at least to finish three laps here with the medium fronts, and then we can move over to what I'm going to call the dreaded soft. It could work. It, it really could, but I just feel. It's going to be a one lap wonder. You're going to get one lap out of it and that's it. It's going to cry for no more. <laughs> but we'll see how this one progresses. So out of horizon. We're actually not that far away from improving here. But too tight to the right-hander there. That is not going to be an improvement on the right-hander. On the power. Across the line. It's a 151.468. Well then, ladies and gentlemen. It is now time for the dreaded soft. <laughs> Well, this one could be interesting. This one really could be interesting. Is it going... Oh, it feels good. It feels like there's plenty of grip. That's one thing I will say. But how will the temperature affect that soft option tyre? I think it's going to be absolutely nightmarish going to the latter stage of this lap. Because there's a lot of trail braking here in Bruneau. At least that is for my style. You get really on the right-hand side of the tyre. You're braking to the very last second. The, the control is vibrating, the, uh, the, the, the vibration is just uh, quite in, immense and intense when you're mid-corner with some of these bikes, and especially in a circuit like here in Bruno. Not every track, Hareth is quite similar, but here, yeah, it's really strong. Not too bad though, it might survive. I guess the issue is not the first part of the lap, it's going to be that latter stage, going to Sector 3 to Sector 4 in the uphill section, up at Horsepower Hill. Price. Yeah, I don't think it will last. <laughs> we'll soon see though, won't we? Let me know in the comments section down below if you think the soft tyre will last and if you think the soft tyre is going to be sufficient for us to set the fastest lap. But onto the right hander for turn 10, that is deep for the Schwantz corner. How is the front going to fare? Going into the left hander here for turn 11. Oh, it, it, it feels a bit bouncy, but it, we're still on it. Still very much on it, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag on it, hashtag Sam Lowe's. We'll charge up the horsepower hill now onto the brakes, looking for that white line there. If you were wondering why we veered off to the right hand side there, that's the prime spot to brake here in the Cardian ABA, uh, AB circuit. Shout out to Carol Abram if you're watching, uh, very unlikely, but why not let it fly? You never know. Cross the line at 151.202 for the Czech circuit with the Red Bull KTM. Look at that for a combination, eh? Czech circuit, South African rider, Austrian manufacturer, and British commentator. You can't beat it, can you? Multicultural everywhere here in MotoGP 23 on Dr. Ace's channel. <laughs> Nicely done. That's a promotion if I ever did hear one. Don't want to get that in your videos. <laughs> anyway, onto the right hand side for turn four. We'll get onto the power. We must keep away from the curb. So close. But we did it. Do I go for that rear tyre brake on... I couldn't really get the angle right then. I don't think I'm going to get this right now for turn five. The front... It's crying. It's... I don't know if it's crying or if it's just weeping at the moment. I think it's going to be in floods of tears in a minute. <laughs> oh, look at it. Oh, my God. The three colours of a pepper. The red, the orange and a yellow. <laughs> Absolutely pushing to the maximum is that soft front. Yeah, this is, the, this is the lap where it all goes peak, peak tong now, isn't it? It's all going heck to a handbasket here. It's, oh, it's red, it's orange, it's... It, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to get up to Horsepower Hill here. I, I'm going to give it my best shot. But I fear for the KTM and I fear 
for Brad Binder. No, he's going to lose the front. <laughs> oh, I'm predicting it. So a moment of silence for the soft front. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. I think that soft tyre is probably the best for a one lap pace. But I feel confident in the hard front and I believe we can still get the achieved objective or at least the target which we acquired to achieve with the hard front. So as far as I'm concerned, let's give it our best shot. Sliding the rear a bit there like Brad Bender-esque. Very fitting for the number 33. And then onto the right hand side. I do really need to get back into the rhythm of getting the rear tyre onto the kerb with this left hand here. And I think... No, I didn't manage it. I sh maybe I shouldn't downshift so prematurely. I was hoping to go from the kerb to the kerb. So you're going to go wide from the kerb then onto the apex of the next right-hander. Unfortunately, just couldn't get it right. Three tenths of a second is the difference. And then on the left-hander... Yeah, this lap time, it's not coming together, is it? Horsepower Hill, I think there's still a lot of time to be gained there. And I think there's a lot of time to be gained in the final corner. Going into Horizon is a very challenging corner, which I hope... I can get right, so onto the right hand side and back onto the power. We'll see what we can produce here into the left hand side. Careful, don't break too hard. That's very tight to the left hand side of turn 11. And we have a chance. We were down by three tenths a moment ago going into sector three. Is this the one? Is this the one to put us in the 150 category on lap eight? Is it going to be the lap? It's going to be close. Oh, that's a little bit out of shape into turn 14, and we've lost the momentum. It's still... We might have a chance. Maybe? No? Oh, across the line of 151.068. Nonetheless, that's a great improvement, but it's not enough. So, back to the drawing board for two more laps. Can we do it? That's the question as well. Can we even do it? Maybe I'm hyping this all up for another 151. Who knows? I guess we're going to find out together, and I am super excited to show you the end results onto the right-hander again. A tenth of a second in the back pocket of the South African. We've got to get it right here into turn five. Onto the brakes. Don't downshift too early. I think I did that all right, actually, for second gear. Looks good. Oh, by a tenth and a bit. Eyeballing the delta in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Now it's two tenths. Oh, we've lost a bit of time, old oh, Matt. You had to push too much. Maybe it's a bit misleading, actually. Maybe we didn't lose that time. Who knows anymore? Hard front. It is definitely a winner. The hard front has got your back, ladies and gentlemen. Use the hard front, ladies and gentlemen. The hard front will have you secured. And I think this is going to be the lap. Unless we absolutely make a flummox of it. I, I think we're good. And this is good. Into turn to Oh, lose. Lost a bit of time. Into the Schwantz corner, now coming on the power. I'm a bit out of position there. It's not usually how I like to take turn 11. And I'm going to lose the front. I've bottled it. I've bottled it. Oh, I can't believe it. Well then, guys and girls. The last attempt. Two more laps to get. In fact, it's actually one more lap if, you, if we're actually being honest with ourselves. Because I crashed. Well, actually, no, that's it. I've already crashed on two laps. But then I've just realised I'm still using the hard front. Everything you know about this challenge has gone out the window. <laughs> I'm a fool. I thought it was a medium front. I, I didn't change. I went back to the pits. Wow, we actually, we were, we were up quite high in the delta there, but I made a complete mess into turn three, and I made a complete mess of this video. What a debacle. Oh, I can see you all now disliking that video in anger. Dr. Ace lied to us. Fraudster. He's meant to be a transparent stand-up kind of guy. Yeah, apologies guys, I made a mess. I, I'm still using the hard front, but to be quite honest with you, I think the medium front, I know this is going to sound very, very confusing now, because I think I said the hard front was the tyre to be on, which I, I agree with, I still believe that is the tyre to be on, but for one lap pace, the soft and medium tyres are the ones to be on. The soft especially, and I think we could go a lot quicker with the soft, but... I've made my bed, I'm lying in it. <laughs> We've committed. And if you're angry about that, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll be sure to ignore the comment and we can uh, continue with doing content on MotoGP23. Ah, oh, I can't believe I made that mess, but I tell you what, we might only need this lap. This might be the one. 
Oh, I almost lost the front again. God, can you imagine? If I lost the front again, then that's it. I would, I probably would have just quit, retired from YouTube. Ten and a half thousand subscribers. That'll do me nicely. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye. <laughs> that will answer a lot of big YouTubers retiring at the moment. I've seen a few people go. So anyway, yeah. As long as I don't leave, we should be happy. Who else can provide MotoGP 23 content? What's that? You you know other content creators? Oh damn. <laughs> Uh, maybe I am expendable, but anyway, into turn one, out of the right-hand side. This is our tenth and final lap of today. Maybe I lied and maybe I'll do one more, but if we, this is the one and we get it, then I'll, act, I'll end the video as a happy man. <laughs> this video has been just... <laughs> I made a mess here today, guys. <laughs> but I'm having such a great time and hope you guys are too. That's all that really matters, honestly. Man, I really can't wait to show you the career mode coming up soon as well. It's just that I had to get this video done in between because, uh, yeah, the career mode is uh, shaping up lively already and I needed that energy to do those videos really good and proper. So uh, once I've had, those, I've had the time to get the sleep and time to arrange my uh, schedule around those videos, you better believe it'll be some of the best commentary you've heard in a while. But this is it for turn eight. I've got to say, this is a lap time that is producing wonders for the man on board the KTM. Three tenths of a second for the South African, up by three and a half. Is this the one, please? Don't mess it up now. Into the Schwantz corner. Corner I always felt strong on in previous games. So misleading with my lap time. It looks like I'm losing time here, but onto the left hand side for turn 11. Keep it in tight as you can. We, oh, but the thing is though, it's good that we're in the green, but we need at least 69 thousandths of a second. Otherwise we will not get the 150 lap time that we're desperately coveting into the left hand side. I shouldn't have downshifted there. Oh no. Is it enough? Onto the right hand side. We're down. We're up by two tenths. <gasps> That's it. Two tenths. No, go back into the two tenths. It is into two tenths across the line. Yes. At 150. Seven. Six. Eight. Oh, I'll end this lap by getting a thumbnail. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. So there it is, guys and girls. Listen to that music. That can only mean it's uh, been a successful day so far. Actually, you hear it in MotoGP career modes when uh, it doesn't go so well as well, but eh, who cares about that right now? Anyway, as we look at it, not bad. New record for ideal lap time would have been a 154.94, so we have a lot of potential, and we really didn't meet that potential today. We're going to have to come back at this one. Maybe we try it with enable performance and see the difference, or we just run the same thing again. I don't know, but guys... I love this one. This was great. Bruno, Brad Binder, KTM. Yeah, this was a great video and I really enjoyed making it. So if you share the same sentiment, don't forget, guys, to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, let me know about any suggestions you may have in the comment section down below. And before I lose my voice, I'm going to say goodbye. So thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.